This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. Joy is the fuse to your faith. When it is ignited, your faith like dynamite will rearrange and change things. The joy of the Lord is like lighting that fuse. I don't know what some of y'all been standing in faith in, but I believe if you'll release your joy, then your faith will become explosive, praise God. Ah. Sermon Songs is back, and this time we're getting face-to-face -face with our emotions. Sermon Songs Volume 4 is available now and features new music from Creflo Dollar featuring Jordan Dollar, including the hit singles Faith Strong, Faith Strong yeah, my Faith Strong and Joy. Visit www.sermonsongs.com to download and stream today. talk about mastering your emotions with joy. How do you master your emotions with joy? Now, one of the things we've talked about, well, mo emotions, we've defined those as feelings, of course, they're feelings. So you'll hear me use emotions and feelings interchangeably. They are feelings on the inside uh, that are uh, caused by pain or pleasure to move you in a direction. Now, here's the interesting thing. Your emotions, whether they're negative or positive, can move you in a direction. That's interesting. It, it, when, when I say move you in a direction, they literally can move your whole life in a direction, your emotions. So now think, if you have an enemy and he's trying to move you in a direction away from the Word of God, guess what he's gonna, gonna hop on? Your feelings, your emotions. He's trying to move you in a direction. And, and so likewise, remember, they're godly emotions. We don't, the objective is not to become emotionless. We don't want to be Christians that try to pretend like we don't have emotions. At the same time, godly emotions will move you closer to the will of God for your life. But we have to deal with the issue of emotions because feelings are real. Emotions are real. Emotions, um, they were, they, they're given to you by God, but what happens is sometimes instead of us mastering emotions, we allow our feelings to master us. And what happens is when they're negative feelings and you don't know what to do about those negative feelings, then they master you. They move you in a direction away from the will of God. So you got to talk about emotions because they're moving you. Uh, circumstances come up in your life and you know what happens? They trigger, if they're bad circumstances, they'll trigger negative emotions. If they're good, they may trigger godly emotions. So this is not about not having emotions. This is about learning how to harness those emotions, whether good or bad, where, you know, instead of them, uh, those emotions mastering your life, you are mastering life because you know how to master your emotions. If you don't know how to master your emotions, you will not master life. But if you, if you want to master your life, master your feelings, master your emotions. Amen. Now, 3 John chapter 1, verse 2, let's read it out loud together. Ready? Read. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper, be in health, even as thy soul prosper. So that word prosper or being successful, he says, I wish that you could prosper and be in health, be successful and be successful in your health, even as your soul will prosper. So what does he say here? As goes your soul, so goes your life. Yeah. As goes your soul, say that, as goes my soul, yes. so goes my life. So, goes my life. so the condition of your mindset will de determine the condition of your emotion set. Remember, 
you, you, you're, you feel like you feel because you're thinking what you're thinking. You feel like you feel because you're thinking what you're thinking. Your mindset determines your feeling set. I'm depressed. I feel depressed. That's because you're thinking about something that's causing the depression. Uh, the anatomy of life, once again, real quick. Um, what you expose yourself to the most will determine how you think. How you think will determine how you feel. How you feel will determine the decisions you make. Your decisions will determine the actions you take. Your actions will determine the habits you create. The habits you create will determine uh, your, your character, and your character will determine your destination in life. So where you are right now today happened as a result of that progression I just showed you. The good news is if you do not like your destination, if you do not like where you are today, you can change it. How? If you don't like your destination, change your character. If you don't like your character, change your habits. If you don't like your habits, change your actions. If you don't like your actions, change your decisions. If you don't like your decisions, change the way you feel. If you don't like the way you feel, change what you're thinking. And if you don't like how you're thinking, change what you're exposing yourself to. That is called the anatomy of life. In other words, if you understand that progression, you can at any time change your life. Powerlessness is a feeling that you're stuck where you are. And I'm telling everybody in here today, I don't care where you are, what kind of mistake you made, what kind of dumb decision you made, you're not stuck. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're not stuck. In other words, you can get out of it, praise the Lord. Turn to the other side and say, you can get out. Yeah. All right? And so as goes your soul. Now, your soul, you are a spirit being. You are a spirit being. You have a soul. You live in a body. I say that because religion over the years has used spirit and soul interchangeably as if they are the same. You are not your soul. You are not your body. See, when, when you die and they put you in a box, that's not you. That's the house you, you used to live in. You are a spirit being. You possess a soul. You live in a body. So when you bury your loved ones, somebody says, well, how you, and, and your loved ones are born again? Oh, well, I apologize. You lost your loved one. You say, no, they're not lost. I know exactly where they are. Because the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Look at there. You are not your body. You are not your soul. You are a spirit being. Say, I am a spirit being. I'm a spirit. I have a soul. I live in a body. Now, what is the soul? Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Your soul is the compartment. It is the part of you that, that, that is responsible for your feelings, your chooser, and your thinking. That's your soul. You have a soul. You have feelings. Now, like I said, Satan wants to surf your emotions until he can move you away from the will of God for your life. So, so this is important. He's trying to move you away from the will of God for your life. There was something that each of you have been born to do. You are not a mistake. I don't care how it happened. Don't tell me what happened and how your mama got pregnant. You are not a mistake. Because there are people that try to get pregnant all the time on purpose. And it don't happen until God can get ready for me. You are not a mistake. Turn to somebody and say, you are not a mistake. You have a God-given purpose. You have a will of God to fulfill. There is something you're supposed to do. You are here for a reason. Now, you might be acting crazy right now, but God knows how to take crazy and mix it in with the rest of the clay as he is working on a masterpiece that one day will be used to make a mark somewhere that cannot be erased. You are not a mistake. But Satan wants to ride on those emotions. Every time you miss the mark or something, every time you do something kind of off, he wants to get on there and just kind of take you farther and farther away from, from the, the, the will of God for your life. And so we're trying to show you how to, to gather the right mindset 
to take you to the right direction. And the Bible says to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. How do you get a spiritual mind? Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Here it is, the Word of God. Well, why, why, why do I pause there? Because that is the very thing the devil has been trying to separate us from, even Christians. You, you guys don't realize what a, we're in a drought right now. It's a drought of the Word. Even Christians, it's okay to get up and make inspirational speech, speeches. It's okay to get up and do life coach speeches, but don't nobody want to open the Bible no more. Nobody wants to open the Bible and say, here it is. Here's what's going on in the Word of God. There's a word drought going on, not here, but a lot of places. But there's a word drought going on, and that, this is why. If Satan can separate you from the Word, you can hear a bunch of truths, and if you're not careful, you'll hear some things that sound good but may not be true. What do you mean? Like God helps those who help themselves. That's what the Bible says. That ain't in the Bible, and that ain't true. Benjamin Franklin said that. And God don't help those who help themselves. God helps people who need help. Amen. You see what I'm saying? You can, you can listen to things that sound inspirational, but they, can, they, they too can go against the Word of God. And whatever goes against the Word of God is carnal in its nature, and it'll end, you, end up leading you away from God's Word. It's something about knowing that it's in the book. Good. Good. The Word gives you a spiritual mind, and that spiritual mind will harness your emotions. Your spiritual mind, all the things you know from God's Word will help you to have authority over your emotions. Everything you know from God's Word will help you to have authority and to have mastery over your emotions. And that's why the devil says, I got to keep people away from the Word of God. Because if I, if I don't keep them away from the Word of God, then I won't be able to surf their emotions and move them away from the will of God for their lives. So they can't do no better if they don't know no better. And so I let them come to church. I let them shout enjoy the message, feel inspired, jump up, scream and holler, and go out and say, we had church today. It was so good. Well, what did he preach about? I don't know, but it was really, really good. That's what he wants because he can now govern your emotion. And then if he can produce you and cause you to be more emotional in church, then he can train you in living by your emotions, and you'll go home and say, I don't feel like God loves me, instead of going home and say, I know God loves me because his word says so, and I can show it to you in the Bible. Amen. You know, Taffy teaches on biblical equality. I don't believe that. That's just women liberation. See, he can do that because if you don't sit in the Word, then you can go. But if, if you get in the Word and she takes you line by line and you see what that is and you're like, oh, my God, I was mistaken. I didn't know that. And so what happens is you got a lot of women who are trapped into that old tradition and they have an anointing that the body needs. And we all have to suffer because they won't, they don't have the freedom and the liberty to release their anointing. And you think all, all of God's anointing you think is on a man. All of God's anointing is not on a man. If all of God's anointing was on a man, man didn't need an Eve. But man needed an Eve yeah. to complete him. All of God's anointing is not on a man. And I'm asking you women to step out of that traditional way of thinking and recognize that God has called you. He's anointed you. He's appointed you. And we need you in the body of Christ in order to reach the destiny that God wants us to reach. And as long as you stay stuck in that old tradition thinking you're being right, but you didn't get enough word to know that was wrong. You never saw it in the Scripture. You saw the word head, but you didn't know what it meant and how to apply it contextually. Well, this is supposed to be a, a review, but y'all got all that? <laughs> okay, so I'm going I'm to leave the rest of it alone. You have, a, you have a right to control your emotions. You have a right to control your emotions. Say out loud, I have a right to control my emotions. Say it again, I have a right to control my emotions. All right, say this, I can control my emotions. I have authority over my emotions. Uh, my emotions don't lead me, I lead my emotions. Look at John real quick. John uh, 14 and 1. I have authority over my emotions. I can control how I feel. You ever heard people say, I just can't help I feel like this. Yes, you can. 
Well, 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 why did you beat the guy up so bad? I just couldn't help it. He disrespected me. Listen to me, and please get this. People sin not because the devil made them do it. People sin because they want to. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Golly, I'm in the bed. How I end up in this bed? And who is this I'm laying with? And where is my clothes? Oh my God, how did this happen? The devil made me do it. No, that's not how that happened. You made a decision. Read verse one out loud together, ready to read. Let not your heart, do you see the implication here? You let not your heart be troubled. Just because trouble comes doesn't mean it has to overcome. Amen. You are accountable for your emotions. Say out loud, I'm accountable for my emotions. Say out loud, I'm accountable for how I feel. Now, this morning, I want to show you a weapon, a weapon that we can use against negative emotions and a weapon we can use to ignite godly emotions. Igniting negative emotions will simply Satan will use your negative feelings to move you from the will of God for your life. Godly emotions will escort you closer. Godly emotions and self-control will escort you closer to the will of God for your life. I wonder how close some of you have been, but you lost it. I wonder how close some of you have been. Now, please listen to me. Uh, Circumstances happen in life, and those circumstances will trigger some bad emotions. I'm not saying you're never going to trigger bad emotions. I'm saying when those bad emotions show up, you understand that you have the authority to correctly harness those emotions so they don't damage you or anybody else. What I am saying is, is emotional stability can be achieved by a Christian who understands that they have mastery over their emotions. So yeah, you'll trip out when stuff go crazy. I mean, you can be in here and we shout and have joy and, and laugh and, and throw our hands up and then you go outside and look down and your tire's flat and all of a sudden negative emotion come in. That's not the sin. The sin is, are you gonna keep that there so long where it conceives something and then get born in your life? What are you going to do with it when it shows up? It's going to show up. In this world, you will have tribulation. It will show up. What will you do with the negative feelings when they show up? You know, your husband said something to you, maybe called you out your name, and you thought, okay, because you're in your feelings now. All right, we're going to handle this. Mm -hmm. He's going to sleep tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, if you can control your mouth, you can control your feelings. Don't you ever talk about call me out my name. You remember how your mom and daddy used to whoop you when you really messed up and everything? Oh my God, just don't talk while you whoop me. Just whoop me silent. Because sometimes when they talk while they whoop you, didn't I tell you to be in this house at 8 o'clock, but now you gonna do what you want to do? I call it a syllable beating. They just beat you by the syllable. Now, some of y'all know it's like, well, what are you talking about? I've never experienced that before. <laughs> yeah, thank God. All right, now let's get started here. John 16, 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have what? Peace. Peace. Now, notice what he said. In the world you shall have tribulation. All right, let's settle that. I don't care what church you go to, I don't care how long you've been saved, you gonna have some trouble. But now notice what he says when the trouble comes. But, oh my God, be of good cheer. Why would you say that? Why would you say you're gonna have trouble, but when, when the trouble comes, that's when, you get, that's when you need to be of, of, of good cheer. He did the same thing when the, when the disciples were in the middle of this storm and they were screaming out, oh my God, help us, we're gonna die. And Jesus said, be of good cheer. Who does that? Be of good cheer. We're in a hurricane. The boat is full of water. We're about to die. And Jesus says, be of good cheer. What? He's not saying that just to be saying it. There must be some type of power, some kind of results, some kind of dynamite action 
that can happen as a result of you making your mind up in the middle of a hard time finding some cheer. Be of good cheer. Now, now, now notice what it says, because I know he's talking about joy here because he's saying this is why you can be of good cheer in the middle of tribulation. He says, I have overcome everything the world has thrown. So what he says is, know this, know that there is nothing that you going to go through where trouble is concerned that I hadn't already taken care of. So he says, if you already know that I've taken care of it, you have a, you have a reason to be joyful and cheer because you know that whatever you're going through, Jesus has already taken care of it. And if you would be of good cheer, I believe he's saying here, you're going to reap the benefits of what Jesus has already done. Amen. 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 Turn in your neighbor and say, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Now look at Philippians chapter 4 and 4. Be of good cheer. I tell you what, that's, that's probably one of the most challenging things you can do in life is when trouble comes, try to be joyful and happy. You have to really talk yourself into this. Look what he says. This is a strong recommendation. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Why would you say this? Because if you break the word rejoice down, and look at it for what it really says in an action point. The word rejoice means to brighten up. It means to leap, and it means to spin around. And I'm looking at those actions words. If you're in a bad mood, don't nobody want to brighten up? If you're in a bad mood, who wants to leap? And who wants to spin around? I double dog Dino dad you to try it. The next time you get some bad news, say, ha, 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 oh! Just do it. Don't, don't, just do it. You'll never know what I'm talking about until you do it. I tell you what, one time they came in and said, $20 million in debt. I didn't know what else to do, but, <laughs> whoa, whoa, Jesus. Well, I don't know what, $20 million in debt, what you going to do, what else you going to do? I thought what I was doing was the least I could do. But I found out it's the most powerful thing a Christian can do that in the middle of trouble, he says rejoice. Why? That's what I'm constantly, when I read the Bible, I just don't read and say, oh, that's a nice scripture. There's got to be a reason he is saying rejoice. Or he wouldn't say it. And he keeps saying rejoice. Yeah, but, but Lord, they just said I had cancer. Rejoice. Rejoice that I have cancer? No. Don't rejoice that you have cancer. Rejoice that I have healing. Yeah. Yeah. Rejoice. Rejoice because I'm $20 million in debt? No. Rejoice because I am your provider. Yeah. Help me now. Make sure I'm saying this right. Joy is the fuse to your faith. Like you have a fuse to a stick of dynamite. Joy is the fuse to your faith. Joy will cause your faith to become explosive. Dynamite is explosive. When it is ignited, it will rearrange and change things. Joy is the fuse to your faith. When it is ignited, your faith like dynamite will rearrange and change things. The joy of the Lord is like lighting that fuse. I don't know what some of y'all been standing in faith in, but I believe if you release your joy, then your faith will become explosive, praise God. Ah. All right, all right, come on, let's go. Look at, look at John 5, 5, I'm excited. John 15 and 11. Joy, don't forget what I just said. So what are you excited about? I see all of you guys walking out of here today and lighting your dynamite. Lighting your dynamite. Lighting your dynamite. Oh my God. Someone said, what you preach on this morning? We figured out how to light our dynamite. Yeah. Hallelujah. You've been standing in faith. Some of you have been standing in faith for a little while. But today you're going to go and light your dynamite. In the 
these uncertain times, maintaining your peace can feel like a losing battle. The truth is, Jesus died, rose, and returned with peace to overcome in any circumstance you are facing. Today's offer is Peace That Prevails, a four message series that can be yours today for a love gift of 25 US dollars or more. You need to calm your emotions down. You need to get in the word and watch that word get on the inside of you and free you from the care, free you from the worry, free you from the stress, give you well founded confidence in what you've been meditating in that it actually comes to pass. To further assist you in maintaining your peace, we have bundled the peace that prevails with the three message series, Exercising Godly Emotions. This combo was designed to help you maintain your peace and master your emotions in every situation and is available today for 35 US dollars or more. Order your combo today. Trinidad and Tobago. The 2021 Virtual Change Experience is coming to your home. If you'll just trust him and believe him that there's a will of God for your life, there's something I'm supposed to do, and I will not miss it this year. I, I had to come to see Trust. Once I heard he was here, it was like a dream. Like, I, I don't even do this for celebrities. Like, when I heard he was here, I'm coming. I'm coming. You will be satisfied. God's got your back. There's profit in serving God. Tell all your unsaved relatives. Tell your unsaved family members. Today was a really revolutionary me message, and it gives you such peace in your heart. You don't want to miss this experience. Register now for this free event by logging on to creflodollarministries.org. I think you would be amazed at what Creflo Dollar Ministry does every day around the world. Testimonies come in from all over about the impact we have. And I wish you could see the kids we feed. Their lives are changed and impacted for the better because of you, our givers. The seeds you sow into this ministry make a mark that, uh, that can never be erased. And I wanna thank you so much for your financial contributions into the kingdom of God and into this ministry. If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to creflodollarministries.org. God bless you. I pray that you were blessed by the word of God today. And remember that we know that this is a different time. This is a different season. This season, which is a holiday time, but yet we are in a pandemic. But you know what? God is still good and our emotions do not rule and dominate our lives. Thank God for the positive emotions, but you know what? You have to arrest and uh, eliminate and eradicate the negative ones. So be encouraged today, make some great memories, start a new tradition, and know that God is good. Happy holidays. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.